Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. Amen. My dear friends, good morning and happy birthday. 335 years. We find ourselves in a time extraordinary and ordinary. A few days ago, I wrote to you in our weekly e-newsletter between Sundays of how we find ourselves in ordinary time. We have celebrated Pentecost, the birthday of the Church Universal, and we are now on the third Sunday after Pentecost, in a time apart from the seasons of Advent or Lent or Christmas time or Easter time. We find ourselves in this time called ordinary, not because it's commonplace, but because these Sundays are numbered, ordered for us. They encourage us to travel through this time together. That's the ordinary time in which we find ourselves. The extraordinary time in which we find ourselves is the celebration of King's Chapel's 335 years as a community of faith. Today, at our 9 a.m. morning light service, I will become a member, officially, of King's Chapel. What does it mean to become a member of King's Chapel? We might look to our prayer book for the answer. In joining the Society of King's Chapel, you enter a community pledged to seek the truth, to serve God, and to celebrate Christian worship in King's Chapel. In doing so, you assume responsibility not only to the church as an institution, but also to each of its members. King's Chapel is unique, Unitarian Christian in theology, Anglican in worship, and Congregational in government. Through this church, we belong to the Christian church throughout the world and to a tradition symbolized before you by the Ten Commandments, the Lord's Prayer, the Cross of Jesus, and the Apostles' Creed. We cherish the freedom to follow this tradition as we understand it, honoring both the freedom and authority of pulpit and pew. Here, many generations have worshiped, and now you, no less than they, become a part of this living tradition. What does it mean to become a part of this living tradition? In my letter to you a few days ago, I reflected on part of what that might mean, at least through the eyes of this Catholic Unitarian Universalist you've called to be a member and minister here at King's Chapel. For me, it means coming Sunday after Sunday in ordinary time to be with one another, to gather around this table in communion with one another, to offer our sacrifice of praise, to gather with one accord, to make our common supplications unto the one who promises to love us and to abide with us, and to endue us plenteously with grace in our times of trial and abundance in due course. In today's gospel from Mark, we find three images. One is wheat. What does the wheat symbolize for us? The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day and the seed would sprout and grow, but the person knows not how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. When the grain is ripe, the person goes in with the sickle because the harvest has come. What is this meant to tell us? The person sleeps night and day and knows not how the wheat produces itself. This is not the exaltation of knowledge, but rather a call to humility. What's valued is not keen insight, but constancy. The farmer gets up and goes to bed day after day. To farm is hard work. To farm means day after day, you must go and tend that wheat, even if you don't fully understand how it produces the grain that will eventually become your nourishment. The task is to come again and again to the field, to plow, to plant, to tend, and then to reap the harvest. This might be a little tricky for some of us, 
may offend our sensibilities. We are, after all, seekers of truth. But what's called for here is a sense of humility. We might remember the prayer, work as if the outcome depends on you, pray as if the outcome depends on God. Well, the life of faith involves a determination to give our full selves to the task at hand, but also a trust in the grace promised by a God who loves us. We come next to the mustard. With what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown on the ground is the smallest of all seeds on earth. And yet, when it is sown, it grows up, becomes the biggest, the greatest of all shrubs, puts forth large branches for which birds seek shelter from the shade. From the shade. There's an irony here in that typically mustard does not result in a tree or even a large shrub. Mustard's an invasive weed. So it's a small seed that produces usually a rather small plant, one that farmers really aren't that keen on because it spreads everywhere. What do we learn from this parable? Maybe potential, even in the smallest and humblest of things. The story is counterintuitive. Jesus evokes this large mustard tree, but for the people listening, for the people who know the truth of their own experience, we sense an irony in this story. The third portion of our gospel reading reflects on parables themselves, stories full of meaning, sometimes, oftentimes inscrutable, and yet they contain the truth. Here at King's Chapel, we're a community pledged to seek the truth, a people gathered, united in the love of truth. How do we find the truths of our faith? of our sacred stories. How do we find them? Not in one sitting, not all at once. The gospel writer says, he did not speak to them except in parables. He explained everything. They have to come again and again, like that farmer has to go to the field again and again, to take these stories in over and over, each time catching another glimpse of the truth, each time hearing another whisper of that truth a truth that sustains us in our work, that sustains us as we answer the call to love God and our neighbor as ourselves. This is a truth that we must continue to search for. We search for it as we practice a faith of constancy, a faith that asks us to come again and again, to gather again and again, as we've gathered over this 300 and 35 years, as we've gathered and as our love and our practice of love and our understanding of love has grown. Just recently, I gathered with a small group of our community to celebrate pride, to celebrate the struggle of a people for liberation, to celebrate our increased understanding of love in its many different forms and varieties. This is but one way we have grown in love, in the practice of love. We might think also of our memorial project as we prepare to give of our time, talent, and communal treasure to the cause of liberation, to the cause of freedom, to the cause of equity, to the cause of honoring those whose history with King's Chapel was difficult. My dear friends, as we travel through this season of ordinary time, may God bless us with the wherewithal to keep coming, to keep looking and listening for the truths of our sacred stories and traditions, to keep persisting in that radical love to which we are called as members of King's Chapel, as pilgrims traveling in the way of Jesus, as a covenantal people of faith, an ordinary people called to extraordinary work. May it be so.